Hey everybody, I'm Simone from Polygon.com and this is my regular cadence of speech. 2016 was an interesting year for me in video games. For one thing, there was no Assassin's Creed, so there was a gaping wound where my heart should be. But on the other hand, I definitely found two great games that I could probably play until I die of starvation or forgetting to pee. Ever. These are my top five games for 2016. very badly drawn. Overwatch is a video game that I kept playing even when I knew that I should be doing catch up on other video games that I had missed out on. And I missed out on those video games because I was playing Overwatch in the first place. I'm not technically really a competitive person, except that I am. Overwatch to me strikes this perfect balance between being really, really fun as well as being competitive, but remaining accessible to new players. And all of those things are very important to me personally. So aside from me sinking so many hours into playing this game with my friends, I also think it's a really important kind of cultural touchstone of 2016. It's only been out such a short time, but it already has this great pro-competitive scene. There are tons of fan artists and fan writers who are making amazing work. And of course, there are lots of cosplayers that you can see at any convention you go to, and they all look awesome. None of this would be possible if the gameplay weren't really tight and the characters weren't interesting and the, the game itself was just so aesthetically pleasing. I think Overwatch is one of the only games where I, I think it could be a movie or a TV show or a comic book just de facto out of the box just as it is. Unfortunately, part of that is kind of because the story is so far divorced from the gameplay itself. Like, why can you play a match where Widowmaker and Tracer are on the same team when in every single short that we've seen they're enemies? Ah, who cares? But whatever. The gameplay is really solid and fun, and the narrative is interesting, even if you have to go to YouTube to get it. Also, my friend was telling me about a match where he saw a Reinhardt charge a diva's exploding mech and push her off the map and sacrifice himself for the team, and I think that that is really beautiful. So, dicks out for Reinhardt. Oh. Fact. There is no such thing as a short play session in Stardew Valley. I was about 20 seconds into this game before I was sure that it was very, very good. And then I just kept going for hours and hours. It was like I was possessed, but also I've never been so relaxed and so happy in my entire life. And then summer came and I thought that my bean trellises that I had planted, so, so many of them, I thought that they would just not grow in summer, but that they would still be there to regrow next spring. That was not true. They died. All of them, all of my plants died. It was like a nuclear winter, but it was in summer. Life is terrible and I've never felt such emotional highs and lows in my life. And that's why Stardew Valley is a good game. Stardew Valley is extremely good. It's this quintessential millennial farming fantasy. Because I think we all secretly do want to live in a world so pure and so simple that we could just give up our horrible city jobs and move to a small town in the country full of really nice bisexual people and Shane, who is mean, but I want to kiss him anyway. The great thing about Stardew Valley is that it has this solid and wonderful gameplay loop, which is also its great weapon that will destroy your life, which is that every single day when your character wakes up, there will be one thing that you just desperately want to accomplish. And by the end of that day, you may have accomplished that thing, but there will definitely be something else that you did not have time to do. And now that's the thing you desperately want to accomplish. So it creates this eternal cycle of you just being like, oh, one more day, one more day. It's fine, I'll just play for one more day, one more hour, five more hours. Never stop playing Stardew Valley. It also just feels like a really good-hearted game. It's essentially about being really nice to people and also making bank off of fruits and vegetables, which I guess is my jam. And you can also make jam in Stardew Valley, so yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Firewatch scared the shit out of me. Uh, I compare it to Gone Home, not for the reason that you think, but because neither of them are horror games, but I played both of them as if they were because I am a huge wimp. 
But my favorite thing overall about Firewatch is that it perfectly captures this feeling of being lost in the wilderness. Like when you go walking in the woods, you might pick out a certain rock or a certain log and you have to cling to that thing as a landmark because everything else just starts to blur together because it's all just more rocks and trees and things like that. And Firewatch really nails that feeling. Like the area that your character is exploring is not actually that big, but it starts to feel really vast just because a lot of the time you don't have any idea where you are. By the time that I was done with Firewatch, I was so tense and so stressed out, which I guess is a feeling that I really like to be given by video games. I'm not totally sold on the ending narratively, but everything that led up to that point and the actor's performances and just the design and feel of the game were so good and that is why it is on this list. I love feeling like I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to know one thing about me, it is that I adore couch co-op games, and I also love being the boss, and yelling, and fighting with my friends, and ending our friendships. So in that case, Overcooked is really, really good. In Overcooked, you play a tiny character working in this hellish version of a restaurant kitchen, just fulfilling orders and sending them out to the restaurant. The thing I love most about it, I think, is that it is super easy to get into. Like, I feel like I could give the controller to my mom and she'd be able to play with me and then I would be disowned, or I could give it to my roommate who doesn't play games and she could also play it and then she'd kick me out. As well as being accessible, you get into these deep strategizing sessions between rounds of Overcooked and you're like assigning people jobs. Like, okay, you need to be reading out the orders that are coming up so we can be on top of this. You need to be getting vegetables. You can get really, really deep into making it as much like a real restaurant kitchen as you possibly can. Uh, and I used to work in restaurants, so I guess I'm just really, really masochistic in that sense. My only complaint with Overcooked is that it's sometimes just too easy to pick up or put down the wrong thing or put something down on the wrong square and then everything goes to shit and you're crying. Oh, ah. In keeping with this theme of me liking games that stress me out a lot, Inside is really, really good. Like from its opening second, it is so powerful. And as you keep playing it, you realize that it's this perfectly designed little package of challenging gameplay and incredible aesthetics that just kind of unfold as you're making your way through this weird little story that has no words in it whatsoever. You're just kind of puzzling it out as you go, because it's a puzzle game. It's also really, really disturbing, but not in that way where it's screaming in your face like, ooh, I'm so fucked up. Inside does not do that. It just has this kind of quiet, disturbing core to it. And some scenes can be really quiet and introspective and other scenes just ratchet up the tension until your heart is in your throat and you're just really, really stressed out because video games are stressful, you guys. But the most important part is that these two halves of this story, the tense side and the introspective side, come together to feel like this perfect, wonderful little package. It is so well designed. So those are my top five games of 2016. But these are just my personal picks and everyone else on the Polygon video team has their own top five choices and you can watch their videos about those choices right here at youtube.com slash polygon. Unfortunately, because our choices are sometimes different, I will have to fight them. And next year I plan to be the only Polygon video person left standing. So come at me. Also, I just realized that three of my faves are Overwatch and Overcooked and Firewatch. So I think I might be part of an Illuminati conspiracy and now I have to go. Bye. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's an onion. That's good. Hi. Nope, that's too high. Um, the actors. <laughs> so aside from this game, Ooh, wow, I just accidentally licked my chin. Mmm, gross. <laughs>